This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with book 2 In chapter 7 this is section 4 Part 4 of 5 Going Deep with the Early Lessons Part 4 of 5 Nothing in madness is dependable. It holds out no safety and no hope. But such a world is not real. I have given it the illusion of reality and have suffered from my belief in it. Now I choose to withdraw this belief and place my trust in reality. In choosing this, I will escape all the effects of the world of fear because I am acknowledging that it does not exist. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 3, Review of Lesson 13 Instead of taking a stand For good or a stand against evil in the world, take a stand of saying that the world you see is not real and the thoughts which you are thinking that are producing it are not real. Take a stand not to believe in it anymore. The dream figures around you may say, You fool, what do you think you are doing? You are losing your mind. They may seem to accuse and rather sharply at times. I choose to withdraw this belief and place my trust in reality. In choosing this, I will escape all the effects of the world of fear because I am acknowledging that it does not exist. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 3, Review of Lesson 13 We are up to Lesson 13. So far we have heard a little about cause and effect. In Lesson 11, we get some reflection about the cause and effect relationship. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. But we still haven't heard much about the cause. Lesson 5 did say, Yet my mind is part of creation and part of its creator, with a capital C. So there is a glimmer that there is something beyond it. The creator or the source is mentioned for the first time. Now we go to lesson 14. Yea, for the big guy. Glory, hallelujah. God did not create a meaningless world. That is the hallelujah lesson. You go through all this other stuff about projecting out a meaningless world and my thoughts showing me a meaningless world. But here we are being introduced to the kingpin and he has nothing to do with the chaotic world at all. How can a meaningless world exist if God did not create it? He is the source of all meaning and everything that is real is in his mind. It is in my mind too because he created it with me. Why should I continue to suffer from the effects of my own insane thoughts when the perfection of creation is my home? Let me remember the power of my decision and recognize where I really abide. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 4 Review of chapter 14 
This is a foreshadowing of the leap that must come. It is not like you have to whoop it up and throw your arms around everyone. But that is the kind of feeling inside your mind and inside your heart. And that is the feeling that should be the feeling of the day. Jesus says there is one thought you can hold throughout the day and that is the thought of pure joy. Friend, if I am in the mind of God, what else would it be? David, develop gratitude. Let go into the joy. If you do not know what to be thankful for, just thank God. This lesson shows us what to be thankful for. God did not create a meaningless world. That is stated in the negative. But I can be grateful for what He did create, for who I am. That is what you want to be grateful for, not specifics. Specifics are all just little reflections of that. Underneath a sense of gratitude for anything specific is the enormous gratitude that none of this is so. Thank God. The joy is not circumstance dependent. It is not personal or specific. It is unfettered and unbound. It is just this feeling. Of course you can share words of thanks. They are like beams coming off the brilliant sun. Little reflections of it. The joy can be expressed in various ways. But the expression points to the intrinsic joy. There is no need for a lot of praise. That is just the old way of pep talks and flattery. This is very much an intrinsic joy and the mind is really afraid of that light. All specifics are just backdrops. If you really go into it deeper, you find there is nothing to be grateful for in specifics. For me, gratitude is no longer aimed at persons, places or things. My thoughts are images that I have made. Whatever I see reflects my thoughts. It is my thoughts that tell me where I am and what I am. The fact that I see a world in which there is suffering and loss and death shows me that I am seeing only the representation of my insane thoughts. And I am not allowing my real thoughts to cast their beneficent light on what I see. Yet, God's way is sure. The images I have made cannot prevail against Him because it is not my will that they do so. My will is His and I will place no other gods before Him. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 5, Review of Lesson 15 My thoughts tell me where I am and what I am. The deceived mind is wound into a web of dark thoughts, into a perception of feeling caught. Our thoughts are like a golf ball. When you tear the little white cover off, you find one gigantic rubber band that you can unravel. It is wound very tightly, but you can just keep pulling and pulling. It is a rubber band 
that has been wound all these times around a core. All my thoughts, wound tightly around the core, are telling me where I am and what I am. Until I question all that is wound around the core, I will really believe I am a person in the world and I will really believe that I am all these roles. I will deny my reality in God in the process of doing that. Workbook Lesson 16 I have no neutral thoughts. Neutral thoughts are impossible because all thoughts have power. They will either make a false world or lead me to the real one. But thoughts cannot be without effects. As the world I see arises from my thinking errors, so will the real world rise before my eyes as I let my errors be corrected. My thoughts cannot be neither true nor false. They must be one or the other. What I see shows me which they are. Workbook Lesson 54, Para 1, Review of Lesson 16 This puts thoughts into the black or white category, all or nothing category. It is not that certain thoughts are more powerful than others. Some people are impressed with specific thoughts, as if they are powerful, and see other thoughts as weak. But this lesson teaches that there are not any powerful thoughts or weak thoughts. There are not any big thoughts or little thoughts. There are only true thoughts and false thoughts. These are the only categories that are helpful. And they are just meant in a metaphorical sense. This lesson is very early on. Later, the teaching is that ultimately there are not any false thoughts They do not exist. But this is a helpful stepping stone. Friend, so wouldn't the true or real thoughts be the powerful thoughts? David, no, false thoughts are as powerful as real thoughts. Friend, I guess they are very powerful. They created this world. David, Ego thoughts are not weak. In fact, they are endowed with the power that the mind gives them. And believe me, the mind is very powerful. That is why Jesus says, Thought and belief combine into a power surge that can literally move mountains. Text Chapter 2 Section 6 It moves planets around the sun. It can certainly move mountains, little tiny bumps. But in this world, where the mind perceives itself as a person, mountains seem enormous and impenetrable by comparison to persons. But mountains are the result of the combination of thought and belief. The deceived mind believes that attack thoughts are real and it feels guilty. So it tries to forget about them. It tries to keep them out of awareness. It seems to alleviate the guilt to believe that private thoughts do not exert any real influence on anything anyway. To downplay the power of one's thinking 
seems to alleviate the guilt. But the cost of that defensive maneuver is that the mind is seen as impotent. How does that fit with the power, glory and magnitude of having been created by God? How can I be magnitude and also have a tiny mind with tiny little thoughts? End of part 4 of 5 of this section. We continue with the last and final part of section 4 of chapter 7 in tomorrow's episode.